The Bible, as a matter of fact, says, Proverbs 24, 16, a righteous man falls how many times? Seven times and rises again. But the wicked fall by calamity. So falling should be so normal. So normal. You bought a piece of land together before you know it, you sold it to someone else. And he used it to buy for another woman a piece of land. Yeah, I know you are expecting disappointments like he asked you to go to Java, you meet at four. Then he came at five. And you can forgive that one because after all you're taking coffee at his expense. Talking about serious things that people do out here. I don't know why I wrote this text. I'm not sure. Let me just see what it has. Let me just confirm what it has. Galatians 6 1. The Bible says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, <laughs> not you who are in the natural world. You who is under the spirit's influence. Paul says, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Our war is spiritual. Our war is not a physical battle. And only those who are spiritual would understand what he means. You who are spiritual. Because if you want to think carnally all the time, you will not handle this. You're not the first one to stay with a man or a woman that disappoint. People have had biggest disappointments. You listen to it and you're like, hey, ile yangu wacha niweke kwanza kidogo. Ya huyu ni kubwa sana. You who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of what? In a spirit of what? Gentleness. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Basically, Paul is telling us, today is me, tomorrow is who? Is you. You never know when temptations will overtake you. No one can always stand and say, I am on firm grounds. The, slow, the, the floor is slippery for everyone. We are all on the same slippery floor. So don't think you, are, you can always be stepping like this. You will never fall. Here, there are people who fall here, here, and they struggle to get there. You, you will just continue up to there. When you thought you were already there, it's when you do what? You'd rather fall when you're a deacon than falling when you are the head elder. People fall. And there is no age limit to falling. People fall until Christ comes back. Thank God for the process of sanctification. Because the forgiveness of today does not take care of the sin of tomorrow. He forgives you today. Tomorrow you'll go into sin. You will again ask for forgiveness. He'll keep forgiving. There is no age limit to disappointments. So you can live with someone for so many years of your life and only to realize they disappoint you when you're 40 years into marriage. Have you not seen people divorce when they're 40 years into marriage? What happened? They should have started a long time ago. Why do they wait until their kids are all married to say we want a divorce? People will disappoint you at any time. Any time. And let no one lie to you that if your marriage passes age 10, you are now stable. Hakuna kitu kama you. Because you think at age 10 the devil has died. But in the first 10 years, that is why we keep on splitting these groups. 
have zero to ten. They are called the young couples. This is the age where there is so much temptation. If you can survive it, you can survive marriage. I tell you, people have people have called it quits in their fortieth year. There is nothing serious in age one to ten. Nothing serious. It's only that you married people you don't know how they think, because our thoughts are informed with so many things. People carry tradition that informs their thoughts. You also carry yours. There is a background against which you reason. So you meet in marriage, then you realize your reasonings are not rhyming. That is always the tension there. And those first few years, I used to understand the other person how they reason and the other person how they reason. By the time you want to run marriage the way you reasoning, both of you realize it does not work. Then you say, let's clear the slate clean. Let's begin to reason the way God wants us to reason. That can take even 20 years. There are people 20 years in marriage still reasoning with their background. They have not accepted that God can actually guide their marriage. They have not. So expect disappointment even when you are 30 years into marriage. Things happen. They do. And serious things. I'm not talking about people failing to pay rent. Serious things. As a matter of fact, Christ in Luke 19, 18 says, Is it Luke 19, 18? I think I'm losing that verse. I have come to seek and save the lost. I'm losing it. Have you seen it? Should it be 1918? Is it 9, Must have written it wrong. Just, I think I wrote it wrongly. 198 maybe. I have come to seek and save the lost. Who knows where that verse is? Good. I got it. 19 should be 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. There is no seeking in the one that has been found. Seeking is always for the one that is lost. And as he moves to heaven, he leaves us that great commission. And he says, go ye therefore. And that remains our mission to date. Every other business we are doing in this life is secondary. Primarily, we are here to seek and save the lost. And so for me, family becomes a mission field of its kind. The toughest as described by Ellen White. There is no tough mission field like family. You all know of the global mission pioneers that our conference sends to unentered areas, areas where there's no Adventist presence. You labor even six months, no one baptism. We call them tough areas. Those areas are not as tough as family. Family is tough. Let, let me do an excerpt from Christ Objects Lesson. Very fast. A quick one. A quick one. We in the book Christ Objects Lesson. Chapter 16, chapter 15, not 16, chapter 15, where uh, why talks about the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. That is what I need, and we are done. Good. I'm here. 
I mean, page 194, paragraph 2. She begins by explaining what the parables mean and says the parable of the lost ship represents those that are lost. They know they are lost, but they simply can't find their way back home. The lost coin are those that are lost. They are not even aware they are lost. And so you can't even talk about them coming back home. This parable has a lesson. No, I've started very far. Let's begin. Yes. The lost sheep knows that it is lost. It has left the shepherd and the flock, and it cannot recover itself. It represents those who realize that they are separated from God and who are in a cloud of perplexity, humiliation, and solely tempted. We have such in the family. I know. People who know they are lost, they want to come back home, but they just don't know how to come back home. Because when they think of home, you've always called back and said, Ulienda, usirudi. Ulidani sita songa. When you see his call, you're always like, how many times do I have to tell you I don't need you to call me? So how are they supposed to come? The lost coin is what I'm interested for now. The lost coin represents those who are lost in trespasses and sins, but who have no sense of their condition. They are estranged from God, but they know it not. Their souls are in peril, but they are unconscious and unconcerned. And many fall in the witchcraft category. When someone is taken into a spell and they begin to do things, you wonder whether it is them. They can't even think. Let me ask you, is it normal for a full grown man with the three, four, five, six, seven children to abandon his wife and children and go and live with another woman who has children that no one knows where they came from? They're about six. And that guy is comfortable there. He's taking care of things there. He's paying school fees. He's paying rent. He's buying food. And it's like these children are his children. So no more. But the minute he comes back to his family, he's hostile with everyone. Do you think this man is normal? One day I'll come back, we handle the subject of spiritualism, the forces of darkness. And let you know how you keep on saying, I don't believe in it, when the devil is rocking your boat. So when the devil has thrown in an arrow, bewitched your husband, you want to fight it physically. You will not win. You can't. These people are normally so lost they are under a spell. Ellen White says such people cannot come out on their own because they don't even know where they are. It takes the intervention of someone else. And when Christ is dealing with such powers, he says, this one, this one, the only thing that can remove it is prayer and what? First day. Because we are dealing with demonic forces. Demonic forces that don't tremble to people in their carnal environment. They only tremble to people in the spiritual realm. And so when we fast, it lifts us from the physical environment to a spiritual environment. You increase your spiritual sensitivity. You increase your spiritual capacity. Your presence makes demons manifest. Because you have arrived. There's a power around you. The demons can't just sit comfortably. But when I tell you to fast in the ulcers, diabetes. I used to have ulcers, but I told God, if this is the only weapon, then today my ulcers go. And I fasted three days, three nights, no food, no water. 
I have not had ulcers to date. I told you yesterday I'm on a 21 day fast. I'm only handling water and fruit. Because a human being can go up to 40 days without food. After 40 days, 41 days, you're now starving. The body is eating itself. The same human being can only go up to three days without water. The fourth day you can die because the body is 87% water. So if you're going on fasting periods that are longer than three days, you do what? Water. And then because poison is being flushed into your blood, let me there's no better medicine than fasting. I'm talking to those that have diabetes, pressure, ngo, ngo, go on a fast. You see how fast you will recuperate. It pushes all poison from us into the bloodstream. That's why when you're fasting, you feel like you're almost dying. You're not dying. It's poison flushed into your blood. So what do you need to do? Push out the poison using water. Because so you drink a lot of water. Your digestive system is used to releasing digestive juices. They are acidic. So they are used that at a certain time you normally eat, they release. So now that you're not eating, they'll keep on releasing because they're conditioned. So your stomach becomes acidic. You feel like, hey, tumbo in a new You will not die. Drink water. See, I'm dying. I'm dying. Have I died? Tomorrow I'll be doing my 14th day. Am I dead? Do I look like I'm fasting? I look good. Huh? Mm. That human beings are are willing to fight to, to, to fast to lose weight. They fast to lose weight. But they cannot fast to fight the devil. Weight loss should not be a reason to fast. Weight loss should be a product of your fasting. I don't know how much I weigh right now, but this is not my normal size. Marjorie will tell you. This is not me. And I told you yesterday, it's the price you pay for a revelation from God. So you keep on. Things are happening. You want to fight with arguments. You want to fight with confrontations. You want, in fact, you even, when it doesn't work completely, you also visit a witch doctor. You pile more demons on the situation. Just understand the one you're dealing with does not even know what they're doing. When your husband has to spread his seed everywhere, understand he does not know what he's doing. And you don't run away. That you, he's gone. He has given another woman pregnancy. They now have children out there. So you also say, I've moved on. So you also go give birth out there. What's the difference between what your husband has done and what you are doing now? There's no difference. They are estranged from God, but they know it not. Their souls are in peril, but they are unconscious and unconcerned. In this parable, Christ teaches that even those who are indifferent to the claims of God are the objects of his pitying love. God is looking for them. <laughs> Marriage is not for the faint-hearted. Not. And everyone has their portion of disappointment. So when you see a woman whose husband has left to go stay with another woman, and then you open your big mouth and say, Mwanamuke mujinga naribu nyumba kwa mukono yake. She didn't know how to take care of her husband. That's why her husband left. Are you sure? This parable has a lesson to families. Listen. The parable of the lost coin. It has a lesson to families. In the household, there is often great carelessness concerning the souls of its members. We don't care. No more common of what they give Andy. Is that we reason? An adult man with an ID. 
Should I waste my time looking for him? This thing is not about IDs. My sin is so strong that not even an ID can handle. I don't have time to follow a man mature. I'll move on with my life and to see how far you go. The fact that you're remarrying tells you you couldn't go far. It's as if you're remarrying a man without an ID. <laughs> Among their number may be one who is estranged from God, but how little anxiety is felt. I could do it. And women can comfortably tell their children, I have lived my life. You live yours. I've taken you to school. See what you want to do with your life. How do you say that to your child? How little anxiety is felt, lest in the family relationship there be lost one of God's entrusted gifts. She calls it, they are entrusted gifts. It means it is God's property laying in your what? In your hand. If it is entrusted, I can swear to you, God wants an accountability when he comes. Where are the children I gave you? Where is the husband with the ID? I give you. You see, I don't take care of Mokoro because I expect goodies from him. That, hey, I'm taking care of you, you should be taking care of me. That is not my, my mentality. I take care of him because when God comes, I must render an account. So whether he takes care of me or not, I don't bother. I have an accountability to render to God. So we take care of each other in the spirit of stewardship. You, you want to run away. See, you run. In fact, today if you tell me, Pastor, I'm packing, I'm going, I'll come help you pack. You try the other side. Experience is a better teacher. If there is in the family one child who is unconscious of his sinful state, parents should not rest. It's interesting how you people rest. It does not even move you. Atayenda, kichoka, atarudi. Let the candle be lighted. Search the word of God, not what Jacobo. Don't look for Ndumba Wandumba. Such the word of God. So we can, we can tame your husband. We can tame your husband. Come, I take you to a place where Jalemo, they're called Jalemo, do? Hey, Kisi, they're called Abasabi. Let me take you. They will pray for you. You will tame him. See, he's running around with women. He will make sure he keeps him in the house. One woman did like that. A testimony she gives. She says, I went. And she told Muganga, Nataka unifungie kwa nyumba. You know, be specific with Muganga what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and she confesses. She went to Kisi. And was given kababa. She came, put it in the food. I tell you, our men are at the mercy of women. You eat food, breakfast, lunch, supper, it has concoctions you don't even know. <laughs> to tame you. <laughs> Be careful when your wife goes to the kitchen to cook for the first time. Careful. Ask yourself why today. Could be putting a concoction. And then she says, for sure it worked. This man never left the house. And that meant he didn't even go to work. See, you wanted, he stopped going to work. He can't even go outside. When he sees visitors, he goes under the bed. <laughs> that is what he wanted. <laughs> 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 
Hey, 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 Quill. Three months, Kazi Elisha, and they couldn't take care of school fee. Kids now had to come out of school because there's no one to pay school fee. She confesses and says, until a week of prayer. This week's of prayer, you people of God came and the guest speaker prayed. But when they were leaving, the guest speaker felt like there's something she wants to say, but she can't. I tell you, when people know you for a deacon, then you want to tell us today you did that. You can't. You heart within. It takes courage. So the guest speaker just encouraged her. Please say, we can help you pray about it. Then she sat and says, what I want to say will even cost me my relationship with my children. And she kept on saying that for one hour. She's still not saying what she wants to say. But these people were very patient with her. They just said, just say it. We'll pray. Finally, she opens up and says what she did. Her children were all over her, wanted to kill her. These guys had to spend the night there to pray. And it's after those prayers, three months down the line, this guy came back to normal. He's back to work. But she says when she went back to Muganga over what was now happening strange, she, she asked Muganga, Bwanayangu sasa endi kazi? School fees watoto wamefukuzwa. Muganga asked him, Uli niapia unataka nini? Si ulisema unataka ni kufungie mzee kwa nyumba. Don't think every woman seated here is normal. <laughs> you see them walk and sing here. Being really shook. <laughs> <laughs> which which doctors? Kaduna <laughs> yako giri 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 kadraraj kaduna. Let parents search their own hearts. Where am I? Search the word of God. And by its light, let everything in the home be diligently examined to see why this child is lost. Please do. Find out why are we losing our child. Let parents search their own hearts. Examine their habits and practices. It could be they're lost because of your character. There are things they are borrowed from you. I told you yesterday, your child is as good as you are. And if you want to change him, change yourself, then they will change automatically. Children are the heritage of the Lord, and we are answerable to him for our management of his property. I told you it's easy. If you find it difficult, leave a childless marriage. It still works. Marriage is still marriage without a child. There are fathers and mothers who long to labor in some foreign mission field. What they call the Yaga. There is no crusade with, by, organized by the church they miss. There are many who are active in Christian work outside the home. While their own children are strangers to the Savior and his love. And I repeat. Win your home. Then you can import your Christianity this way. Export it. As another woman speaker puts it, if your Christianity is not working at home, don't mind to export it. The work of winning their children for Christ. Many parents trust to the minister or the Sabbath school teacher. But in doing this, they are neglecting their own God-given responsibility. The education and training of their children to be Christians, listen, is the highest service that parents can render to God. 
not being elder one or head deacon, head deaconess. Say, I must serve the Lord. I am the head deaconess this year. That is no service. It has its category. The highest is that you will take care of your parental responsibilities. By a neglect of this trust, we prove ourselves unfaithful stewards. No excuse for such neglect will be accepted by God. And I told you, Eli was not even excused. The high priest. You, you're talking about Elder One. We're talking about high priest. The one that connects people to God. You're not even sure what God has said. Do you want to work so hard? Don't recycle elders here. Let everybody have a feel of it as the others rest to take care of their what? Hey. next year. mama becho pampas. you know, church, we are having our holy communion next Sabbath. Where are you calling our gigo code? Let everybody taste it. Take care of your family. Do you know that that is the same principle in the choir? The choir in the time of Israel had the choirs singing every two months. It was split like that. You can't sing the whole year. You sing two months rest. Get the next choir for March and April. Why? So that you can also have time with your what? Your family. So when we insist that everybody should be a choir member, it's not for nothing. It's so that some people can also not feel like they're the only ones who have a voice. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you don't carry your church business to the house. In fact, when you get there, say, I'm sorry. I've come late, I'm sorry. Get into the kitchen like, But those who have been guilty of neglect are not to despair. Praise the Lord. I know we have made mistakes. We should not despair. The woman whose coin was lost searched until she found me. They have always asked me, Pastor, he's gone 10 years. Should I still wait? Say, yeah, wait. Even the lost sheep, the Bible says he searched. The word is until he found it. So when you ask me how long should I wait, I will tell you the same thing. Until you find him dead or alive. Then you can move on with life. A woman is bound by law for as long as her husband lives. When she dies, when he dies, he's at liberty to get married to whoever she wants. And I repeat, let no man lie to you that their wives left. Did I say that? Let no one lie. If you have a way of finding out they have died, you can marry him. But if he tells you that we divorced, don't even, don't let divorce lie to you that you can remarry someone. That marriage is intact in heaven. Amen. And those of us that have tried it, you can, you can agree with me even as you sit in that marriage. You always have this fear. What if she comes back? What if she shows up? In the dark, what if? What if? What if? <laughs> What if her children show up? Inyaka, until when he dies, you're still worried. What if they come and find out he had another wife? Children have come. Why? Christianity is a life of liberality. You don't need to tie yourself to such things. Men are out here free. Why would you just be tied to someone who's, who was once married? Paul says, if you feel like you can't stay, Go separate ways. First Corinthians 7. And then he says, if you think you want a remarriage, look for your what? Your spouse. Who left? 
process green card in bed. No way. Those women come back. They come. And they just come back when you begin to enjoy your life at 40. Life begins at 40. And disrupts everything. I know of a woman who was married like that. And her mother said, my girl, you're not worried this woman will come back. And the girl said, he has told me he's been gone 15 years. I asked him what if she comes back. He told me he'll not consider it. I tell you. <laughs> people change if you didn't know <laughs> she got into marriage this woman left about three children very young the man has been struggling so she joins the marriage she has a child one guess what after she has struggled for years to raise these ones that woman showed up she showed up. Do you know who was the first one to welcome her? The mother-in-law. <laughs> so when she asked the husband, now what do we do? The husband said, what can I do? She's the mother to my children. People change. We do we change. Anger. <laughs> so she's now in a polygamous setup. And you can't pull out. Mutwa si kudanganye. Kama hakuna wanaume victory na Robi Central League. Diki zingo. Weke dria keda ni ino kinya chopa hero. Mimi naishi kizumu, mimi naishi kizumu, mimi naishi kizumu. Naishi kizumu unafanya nini? Tembea uone. Eh. Hey. There is no patience that can be compared to the patience of the second coming of who? We are still waiting. Our fathers waited, died. We are still waiting. It's patience. If you cannot wait for your children and spouse, we need to question your waiting upon the second coming of who? Of Christ. And I repeat, you wait. Even if it means you're waiting until Christ comes back, life after that is better than the life now. Amen. I told you this thing is tough. This thing is tough. Tough, tough. So in love, faith, and prayer, let parents work for their households until with joy they can come to God saying, like Isaiah 8, 18 says, Behold, I am the children whom the Lord hath given me. We, we are just, I've not even started the illustration. I don't know what to do now. This is our last session. We will be interfering with the, the rest. And so the purpose of marriage is the salvation of your spouse and children. We don't save angels. Naturally, we are sinners. If it were not for my spouse, I wouldn't be who I am. That is what you should be saying. Stand on that end and say, if it were not for Mokoro, I, I wouldn't be who I am. And Mokoro should stand there and say, if it were not for Lisa, I wouldn't be who I am. I've, ha I've gone through the toughest of marriages. I doubt any of you here who has gone through what I've gone through within a short span. And God had to break me to minister to you. Amen. I had to understand what you're going through. 